The Go Global San Diego initiative is sponsored by the think tank Brookings Institution and financial firm J.P. Morgan Chase. Here with the details are my guests, Brookings Vice President Bruce Katz and Sean Barr, Vice President of the San Diego Regional Economic Development Corporation. And Bruce, specifically, what what exports and foreign investments would businesses in San Diego be involved in under this initiative? Well, all metropolitan areas have distinctive advantages in the global economy. Um, you sit on a border with our second largest trading partner. Uh, you excel in life sciences, health information technology, um, telecommunications because of Qualcomm. Um, so those are the kind of products and services you export abroad, uh, obviously to Mexico and Canada, but then much further to the rest of the world. And Sean, can you give us some examples of how San Diego businesses specifically would benefit from this sort of global competition? Absolutely, well Peggy, it's ultimately about competitiveness. So the competitiveness of our region and the competitiveness of our companies and our firms here that employ hundreds of thousands of San Diegans. In fact, exports and foreign investment essentially have uh, account for 110,000 jobs here in our community, nearly over 8% of our total employment base, who pay fundamentally higher wages than those that do not export or are not engaged in, in, in the globe in a way that some of our domestic firms and more inward looking firms are. Sure, so Bruce, let me, let me drill down a little bit on this about the jobs, because some people are concerned that when you start talking exports and exporting sure. manufacturing and businesses, you're gonna lose jobs here and you're certainly gonna dilute the money pool here, those, that money is going to be spent in other countries. How do you address those concerns? Well, the foundation of cities is trade. Uh, when you're a competitive city, you're making products and providing services that the rest of the, the world wants. And frankly, as Sean was saying, it's a prerequisite for broad-based prosperity because exporting companies and, far, and companies owned by foreign companies pay a wage premium because ultimately they have those quality products. <laughs> we are seeing after the recession, America uh, having a reshoring of advanced manufacturing and really beginning to engage the world in much more dramatic ways. This is good for job creation in this region. In this region, so just to clarify, it's not like you're saying these companies are gonna go to Mexico or Canada and build industries, is that correct? Well, they may actually grow into Canada and Mexico mm -hmm. as our two largest trading partners, mm -hmm. Canada one, Mexico number two. Of course, here in San Diego, we understand that binational aspect to the NAFTA footprint more than any region, frankly, in North America. We are a case study for the world in the binational innovation mm -hmm. economy where one has a research and development facility here in San Diego, has their North American headquarters, if not their global headquarters here, and can manufacture and take advantage of everything that Tijuana and Northern Baja have in terms of assets, and that makes a globally competitive region that is distinct from any other. So good arguments for global competition, but um, let me start with you, Bruce. What are some of the major challenges to this? Uh, major challenges tend to be around skills. Uh, you're talking about companies that need uh, workers with science, technology, engineering, math skills. So in that's this country. In, uh, in this country mm -hmm. and in this region. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of emphasis has to be put on your community colleges and even your high schools working closely with your companies and your exporting clusters so they get a, a feeder system of uh, workers with the right skills for those, uh, sure. for those areas. Sure, let economy. me have Sean jump in on that as well. Are there mm -hmm. specific challenges for businesses here? Oh, absolutely. In terms of, we've surveyed over 400 businesses here in our community as part of this effort. And what we've seen are two things. One, companies don't have the information that they need to access those markets. And two, they don't know who to talk to. There are incredible resources here in our community with great information about how to, in fact, go global. So for companies who are trying to take that next step, to really take on a market where we see 85% of the world's growth is gonna happen outside of this country in the next four years. They need access to information and they need to know who to talk to. It is ultimately and fundamentally about who you know and what your network is. That makes you competitive. Right, and, and we'll have to end on that, Bruce, with this, this, so how do you do that? How do you get this up and running? What is the next step forward? Well, I think the next step forward is, is for, uh, uh, for a group of institutions and leaders to collaborate to compete and make global trade a key hallmark of your economic development strategy. And I think that's what EDC is doing with the mayor, with the county leaders, and with many of your other major companies that are already based in this region. 
All right, I want to let folks know they can read the Go Global Initiative in full on our webpage, kpbs.org. Uh, Bruce, Ian, Sean, thank you so much. Thanks Great to be here today. Thank you.